So Nephilim Free has blocked me and deleted all of the videos regarding our debate, but he has not changed his arguments. So I'm going to make one last video as the final nail in the coffin of Nephilim Free's morphological argument. Now Nephilim Free always gives the vaguest definition of what he would accept as a morphological change. Here's an example. Morphology is form and structure, not form or structure, form and structure, form and structural design. Creationists in general use vague terms such as this so they can interpret it however they like in the future and dodge anything we might throw at them. To rebut the claim that morphological change has not been observed, I could simply point out that the changes between dogs, which Nephilim Free accepts, is referred to by the scientific community as a morphological change, but I will go further than that. You see, Nephilim Free made the mistake of pointing to homeobox genes, that these genes cannot be permanently changed, and that's why morphological change is impossible. This is really the only basis to his argument that morphological changes are impossible. If I can show this claim to be wrong, then his argument fails. One example Nephilim Free brought up is the damselfly and the dragonfly. Now, unknown to Nephilim Free, I'm sure, these are excellent examples of morphological evolution on their own. Both are undoubtedly derived from a common ancestor. The dragonfly appears about 200 million years ago, and the damselfly about 60 million years after that, with only minor differences between them. Similarities include mating, general shape, and behavior. The most obvious differences are the eyes. Whereas a damselfly's eyes are outset and a dragonfly's eyes are inset. At resting position, the damselfly will hold the wings parallel to the body while the dragonfly wings will be outstretched. And of course, the wings also differ in form as, and structure as well, as shown in the diagram. This beautifully demonstrates why nothing in biology makes sense except for in light of evolution. No one in their right mind would claim that these two did not have a common ancestor. Uh, on to an example of a morphological change which Nephilim Free must accept. Ah uh, yes, the infamous Abrabidopsis thaliana. For those of you who have not seen my previous discussion with Nephilim Free, he absolutely failed to provide evidence of some kind of weird grandparent DNA repair mechanism using a debunked example of the Arabidopsis thaliana, a type of plant. Unknown to Nephilim Free, the Arabidopsis thaliana has been used extensively to study homeotic mutations. Most notably is research into flower development, and yes, this is done in the lab. Research in the Arabidopsis thaliana has also been useful in discovering the mutational cause of differing leaf morphology of tomatoes from the Galapagos Islands. Nephilim Freaks cannot refuse these examples because, number one, he already used them in favor of his failed theory, and number two, because it was observed inside the lab. Put it plainly, Nephilim Free, morphological changes have happened, and they are passed on to the next generation, just like your traits pass on with your relatives. Peter and John didn't heal that man. Jesus did. They were just like the tool in his hand. Jesus used their faith, and he'll use ours too.